Forex Focus brought to you by IG, the developing story of whether or not the Fed is done raising interest rates. Markets right now pricing in the greatest chance of them being done raising interest rates for the last several weeks and, and few months here. We'll get to those uh, likelihoods particularly in a second, but I do want to dive into you know what the economy looks like if the Fed is done raising interest rates like the market is pricing in. Now what? If they're done raising rates, is it just they cut them down to zero and stocks move through all time highs? Um, is it that simple? Uh, they're done raising interest rates, so my home prices are just going to skyrocket back to new all-time highs as well. Um, of course, as you might imagine, it's not that simple, but we're going to illuminate what that all looks like. And I first want to start out with just the simple cycle of uh, a theoretical economy and where we theoretically are in that cycle. Um, because, you know, we, we've seen this so many different times, and you've probably heard from so many different friends and family members who work in finance or have been around investment, and they'll always tell you that everything's cyclical and you should read history books and everything else. That's, you know, true to an extent. That's why they teach uh, macro and micro economics, and uh, those textbooks have been relatively similar for so many years. Uh, but it does look different every time. And so I want to start with the theoretical, and then we'll talk about our current flavor of uh, economy. And, and this is what it looks like, my friends. Economy expands, inflation rises, Fed hikes interest rates to move that inflation down. The economy contracts along with those higher interest rates. Uh, employment and inflation fall. Uh, and employment falling and the economy contracting uh, causes the Fed to then cut interest rates to spur growth once again. Um, and uh, right now, we're kind of in between that phase of inflation being high it's it's lower than it has been over the course of the last couple of years but it's still relatively higher than the central bank likes it uh but our economy hasn't necessarily really contracted fully it's it's not at its all-time highs but oftentimes that economic contraction can look like a stock market crash and we haven't gotten that uh and uh, everybody wondering if we are getting kind of uh, if you've heard the term soft landing um that essentially just means that it can inflation come down to where the central bank wants it with the economy not crashing a soft landing just contracting just enough to get inflation uh in line and and you might ask you know why does the cycle have to be this way why can't it just be you know inflation not rising and employment not falling um well, because to, to get expansion in the economy, to create new innovative products, uh, to see stock prices rise and, and, and everything else, you're usually going to get along with that growth, all of those good things, uh, inflation oftentimes. If we're creating innovative new products and uh, you know the, these things that are in such high demand, then companies are... Uh, indebted to their investors uh, to raise prices to create higher stock prices for their investors. And so you're going to get that inflation a lot of times with that economic expansion. Um, and thankfully, you have a central bank that watches that inflation. They want it at 2%. And when it gets higher than 2%, they hike interest rates to bring it down uh, lower there. Well, okay, well, why can't they reduce inflation without contracting the economy well unfortunately to get prices for goods and services for us consumers back down to only increasing at a small rate so that we don't have to spend so much money on the same stuff that we were buying last year um they, they do have to kind of contract some of that innovation uh along with it um otherwise you can't just ask uh, you can't be the fed chair powell and just ask companies hey can you guys stop increasing the prices? Uh, you have to increase those interest rates uh, to bring that inflation in line. And that, well, why does employment have to fall? Well, 
when those companies have these higher interest rates to deal with, they can't be expanding as much money investment. Everything is harder to come by. Uh, and so inevitably they lay off workers and employment falls. And uh, it's interesting. Those are the two things that central banks watch. They watch employment. They watch inflation. And uh, of course, you've got, you know, your crazy uh, aunt or uncle who hates the the central bank, hates the Fed for whatever reason. Um, but you can really whittle it down to. And if you watch the most recent uh, Fed meeting, they're really just watching inflation and, and employment. There's so many things that go into those two values. But they uh, it's almost like their job title is 2% inflation and uh, you know unemployment that is around 4%, not higher than that uh, around 4% value. And so there you have the theoretical cycle. Let's take a look at what we're seeing in the market, uh, because there is still a slight chance that the Fed hikes interest rates one more time. But these chance, th this likelihood um, of a rate hike has been moving lower, was 30% uh, a week ago from the CME group, um, and got as high as you know, 40, 50% in the last couple of months uh, that they would hike another time. Now, only at 20%. And uh, it feels like here on the descent, as uh, a lot of talking heads saying, the rate hikes are over. Uh, the Fed Chair Powell hasn't said that the rate hikes are over, but the market definitely starting to price that in. And so what does that mean for our current stock market, for our currency market, for our housing market, and everything else? Well, uh, stocks have definitely been inversely correlated with interest rates throughout the last couple of years. You have there in red the 10-year yield uh, on its ascent since uh, 2021, and you have the S&P 500 uh, hitting lows in this time frame as that uh, interest rate was hitting highs. And now you even see recently, the most recent data points, the last 24 hours, that red line moving lower a little bit as interest rate projections are falling, like I was just saying. Uh, and that black line, the S&P 500, bouncing back from recent lows that they put in uh, as you can see, the last couple of months in particular, since uh, around June, July area, uh, the 10 year took a leg higher from under 4% to close to 5%. And in the same time, the S&P 500 went from trading around 4,600 down to 4,200 for uh, a second there. And um, now, if they're done hiking interest rates, the Fed is, uh, theoretically, the stock market is it's almost like uh, running a race with uh, without the parachute strapped on your back, right? And so the the stock market, given its recent historically negative correlations to interest rates, if interest rates are done rising and potentially coming down, uh, which we'll see in a second, we'll look at the projections for the future past just the next Fed meeting. If interest rates are potentially coming down, then the stock market might be back. You might get back into that growth part of the cycle, right? Just going back to this cycle really quick. You know, if we're already in this contracting uh, section here, and uh, maybe the next few data points, uh, employment falls a little bit. And uh, again, hopefully that soft landing where uh, unemployment maybe rises slightly, but not at, you know, stock market crash kind of levels. Uh, and the Fed cuts interest rates a little bit, and the economy's back in expansion mode. That's at least what they've priced in in the last couple of days. Um, now, let's take a look, though, at this inflation and unemployment and see if, you know, what needs to happen for the, the Fed to halt those uh, interest rate hikes for good. Um, and you see inflation is definitely lower than it was. The peak inflation was around the middle part of 2022 and got as high as 9%. And now we're in the three handle, which is a lot closer to the 2% target uh, than 9% uh, was a year ago. But uh, Fed Chair Powell, the reason that he hasn't completely taken interest rate hikes off the table 
is he keeps using this word sticky, sticky inflation. We're worried about sticky inflation because inflation has remained stuck at that three to four percent level. It hasn't really budged from there. They want it at two percent. Um, and you might say, you know, three uh, percent is pretty good. It's pretty close to two, isn't it? Why are there such sticklers for this level? Um, and it's it's because it's a tr- first of all a tried and true uh, level of you know decent growth without increasing uh, prices for goods and services so much that really uh, hurts the everyday consumer. But two, they've seen instances historically of inflation rising really high to you know eight, nine, ten percent, coming back down to three, four, five percent. And then rising back up again because they haven't fully thwarted that high inflation environment. So there's still, you know, that outside chance of another interest rate hike if that inflation stays higher than the two percent target for the next several months. So if we do, on the flip side, we get inflation prints that are two and a half percent or two percent even. Uh, in the next couple of months, then the market will probably continue to price out the chances of interest rate hikes and maybe price in some interest rate cuts. We'll get to in a second. Uh, Unemployment, similar uh, type deal here where we've been consistently seeing under 4% unemployment, which, you know, is it? I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the fact that like, these are overall or on the face of it, like good problems to have. Uh, which is to say, you know, we've we have had high inflation over the course of the last year or so, but it's been healthy high inflation, which is, you know, wages, average wages in the U.S. have been growing. That's been a big part of why inflation. People have more money, they spend more money. Inflation goes up. We've had, you know, s- certain stocks here in the U.S. Uh, trade through all-time highs in the last couple of years here, um, and, and so it is net on net, uh, a a healthy inflation thing. The same as you would want, theoretically, unemployment to be lower rather than higher. Because the the flip side of this scenario is the stock market's crashing. Uh, We're seeing deflation, uh, negative price growth. Uh, Unemployment is at 10%. And interest rates are already at 0%. And the central bank can't do anything to fix it. We are in uh, a preferable situation here, but they do want that inflation down to 2% unemployment rate uh, closer to 4%. Um, and, and the market is planning on rate cuts as soon as next year. Uh, as you can see, the focus of this distribution of likelihoods is around 50 basis points to 100 basis points lower than where we currently are. Right now, we're at five and a quarter to five and a half percent. Um, and uh, the greatest likelihood being four and a half to 475. Uh, but the, the bulk of the curve being around, like I say, half a percentage point or a full percentage point lower than where we currently are. So outside chance of rate hikes, uh, one rate hike that is in the next uh, couple of meetings, the next couple of months here, but market thinking by the end of next year, uh, not only could the rate hikes be over, but they could be rate cutting, uh, and which would be very meaningful for the stock market and real estate market, uh, home builders and, and everybody else that have been so negatively affected by high interest rates. Um, and the Fed also expects this. Uh, it, it's actually pretty rare that we have the market and the Fed on the same side of interest rates. Uh, expecting kind of the same thing or thereabout, approximately the same thing. And you see here on the dot plot for 2024, the expectation that uh, interest rates will be maybe not as low as the market is pricing in, uh, but still, you know, 25, 50, 75 basis points lower than where we currently are. Some central bankers thinking uh, a full 100 basis points lower than where we currently are. One central banker thinking that they'll be higher, um, but the bulk of that distribution a little bit lower than where we currently are. And then in 2025 and 2026, you can see the expectation uh, pretty significantly lower for interest rates than where we currently are in the, you know, three handles, some uh, people in the two handle for interest rates uh, there. And so the market and the Fed having 
the same longer term expectation that these Fed uh, rate hikes are either nearing their end or at their end, and the cuts might be starting soon. That being said, historically, rates have uh, risen and fallen a lot quicker than uh, the projections that we're currently seeing. You go back to the financial crisis of 08, we go from a similar environment to now, 5 to 6% interest rates, down to zero uh, in the course of a, a handful of months there. 2020 pandemic, we go from, you know, the one to two percent range down to zero in the course of the, remember they cut rates twice in the month of March for 2020, uh, so brought those down to to zero percent very very quickly. Historically, rates have fallen much faster than expected, and this is you know been in these last couple of instances, and you can kind of see. Uh, on the leftmost part of this, just the tail end of the interest rate cutting environment that we had uh, after the dot com bubble. All three of these scenarios being, you know, stock market crashes that are pushing the Fed to cut interest rates very quickly. Now, one, it's a small sample size. And two, um, you can't predict a crash. It is literally the hardest thing in the market. They call it a black swan event because it's so rare. Um, and, and, you know, the market and the Fed now projecting that we get this soft landing, which is rates come down to three, four percent, something that's easier for the real estate market and the technology market to uh, deal with. Um, and, and we don't need a, a stock market crash to bring those lower. Uh, we could just normalize those rates. Um, and now, what does this mean for stocks and real estate and everything else? You already got that piece. Dollar, though, is kind of the elephant in the room here. And uh, we've already seen some dollar downside uh, in the, the first couple of days of this rate hikes being over uh, potential environment. Um, Keep in mind that this dollar has, if interest rates in the U.S. go down to 4%, 3%, especially versus the yen, a, a market in Japan where they haven't re, uh, hiked interest rates at all, um, you might expect that if U.S. If Japanese rates have stayed here the whole time and U.S. rates climb, 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 and the dollar appreciated against the yen and U.S. rates come back lower again, uh, the dollar might depreciate against uh, the yen and, and has a lot of room to fall, given that they're trading uh, in the last week at 30-year at price extremes uh, to the upside in dollar, downside in yen. And in the last year or two of trading, we've seen you know similar historical highs for dollar versus Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, euro, and pound. Um, and so, might be good for you know stocks and real estate and everything uh, else. Might not be so good for dollar. Uh, it'll be a lot to watch for. Obviously, a lot of data to come out to confirm that the rate hikes are over. But if we're in this new environment, could see a lot of trends uh, moving in the other direction. 